Okay, welcome to Cooking with Fahey. Today, we're going to start prepping for Rosh Hashanah. We're gonna make one of my favorite recipes, Moroccan chicken tagine. This right over here is a tagine. What we're gonna to need today is some skinless chicken. We have some fresh cilantro, parsley, tomatoes, lemons for garnish, one can of chickpeas, power of butter, two onions, three cloves of garlic, honey, obviously, because this is Rosh Hashanah and we want a sweet new year. We have some salt, ras al hanout, which if you do not have, there are a lot of substitutions. Uh, we have some sumac, turmeric, cayenne pepper, black pepper, and olive oil. Let's get started. So we're gonna start first with our onions. We're going to do one of them diced and one of them sliced. Rosh Hashanah this year is actually a little bit later in the calendar, so we have a nice amount of time to cook. I start like literally planning my menu, Rosh Chodesh Elul. In this recipe, we're gonna incorporate honey, and honey is one of those simon that we should have a sweet new year. And like sometimes you think like, oh, it's like childish, like, oh, we should have a sweet new year. But actually what we learn in, in Yiddishkeit and we learn in Judaism is that the simon and the things that you say and the things that you believe in, it actually does become part of you. And actually having the honey and believing that you're going to have a sweet new year, it does become true, it really does. So we have two different types of onions here. We have diced onion and we have sliced onion. And we have three cloves of garlic here that we're going to add. Three cloves of garlic, we're gonna slide it in over here. And then we're gonna to start to add our spices. We're gonna add one and a half teaspoon of turmeric, one teaspoon sumac. Sumac is actually cool, not everybody has it. It has like a, like a lemony flavor, it's really good. Cayenne calls for a quarter of a teaspoon. I like to go with a half a teaspoon, we like things spicy. I also like a spicy ear. We have ras al hanout, which is a combination of spices. It's like a medley of spices. Cinnamon, cumin, turmeric. And then I'm going to carefully place the chicken in. I have about eight pieces of chicken over here, depending on your pot. You do not need a tagine. I just happen to love it and it's fun and pretty. Two tablespoons of that power of butter. And then we're gonna drizzle two tablespoons of olive oil. Two teaspoons of salt. And then about a teaspoon of black pepper. And now we're gonna bring it over to the fire. I'm gonna put it on high heat. What's gonna happen here is that like a really nice paste is gonna form. I like to like stir it pretty often, but not like babysit it, but I like to like keep an eye on it, flip the chicken, make sure all the spices get around and it starts to get to like thicken a little bit. Okay, so now for some tomato Torah. Um, in the month of Elul, there is a saying that Hamelach Basadeh, the king is in the field. So I started thinking like, did Hashem get lost? Does he not have ways? Like what's he doing in the field? One of the things I've learned as a kid is that during the month of El, Hashem is just like a little bit more approachable because he's in the field. Um, you know, to be able to like greet the king and go to the king's palace, you have to like jump through hoops, you have to like know people to be able to get in. But because Hashem is in the field, he's a little bit more approachable. And then that brings us to the theme of El, which is really tshuva. So we can connect to Hashem a little bit more. He's, like we said, just a little bit more approachable. But I recently learned that instead of thinking that Elul is just like this preparation for Rosh Hashanah, oh my gosh, are you ready? Start doing tshuva, make phone calls, call people, apologize, you know, start doing cheshman hanefesh. How about thinking about it like this? What happened in the month of Tammuz and Av? Jewish people lost the Beis HaMikdash. And who lives in the Beis HaMikdash? That's the place for the Shekhinah. That's the resting spot for Hashem. And now that the Pesach Mikdash was destroyed, Hashem has nowhere to go. He's literally looking for a two bedroom apartment to like sublease, you know? And with that thought process, I realized that Hashem is not just more approachable, Hashem actually needs us. Hashem wants us. Hashem wants help finding an apartment. Hashem wants somewhere to step into. And when we open up our hearts and we open up our homes and we say, Hashem, we're here for you just as much as you're here for us, that's literally Anila Dodi Vidodi Li. Those words are not just beautiful things to put on your wedding invitation. They're actually what the theme of tshuva is. So this idea of like having a relationship with Hashem when He also needs us because we need to rebuild the Beis HaMikdash in order for Him to come into, it's a very comforting feeling. Elul is no longer scary. Elul is a place where Hashem is approachable. 
Hashem is looking to settle in within our homes, in our houses, in our shuls. And that's kind of how I started preparing for Rosh Hashanah. So now that we have three diced tomatoes, we are going to chop our spices. So we have three tomatoes, and then we have two tablespoons of parsley and cilantro. I love to use fresh herbs. There's something about like the fresh herbs that just make the dish so delicious. Send it over. And then we have cilantro. And if you do not cook with cilantro, you should start. Now we're gonna go bring this over to the chicken. I'm gonna actually lower it a drop to simmer and then add in all these ingredients. I'll start with the chickpeas. We have our tomatoes. It's gonna feel like a ton, but it really does cook down. Now, the beauty of cooking with a tagine is because like it's so high, but once you cover it, it fits. If we wanna feel a sweet new year, and we wanna connect to the sweet new year, we have to go to the emotion store, and the emotion store is actually up in our brain. And the things that we think about, and the things that we meditate on, and we say, and the things that we cook, and that we infuse into it are the things that we're gonna feel about. And we're truly going to believe that it's going to be a sweet new year for all you did, for everybody. And I think that we're all doing a good job by adding honey and making our honey cookies because really this is, this is it. Like the year didn't need a sweet new year. We know that we need it. And these are the things that we're thinking about. We shouldn't be thinking about sad things. We should be thinking about sweet things and delicious things and we should taste it. It's in our food and it's infused within us when we eat it and we ingest it. So with that, I wanna wish you all a happy and sweet new year. Um, let's go check on our tagine. This is looking amazing. I'm gonna bring it down to a simmer and I'm gonna add the honey. Obviously we're adding the honey, but we're also adding a little tang and a little lemon over there. Actually, the last step is to just cover it all the way to the top with water. Just enough to cover. Place that cover back on top. And I'll see you in 15 minutes. One of the main themes of this month is the theme of tshuva. And you know, like we always start to think like, oh, tshuva is the time that I should like start calling all my friends and apologizing for all the things I did wrong. But one of the things that we learned in Hasidus is that tshuva is a little bit more than that. Tshuva is about returning to yourself. And who are we? We are a chelak al-kami, mal mamish. We have a divinity inside of us. We have a piece of divine in us. Chelak al-kami, mal mamish. Mamish, like in mamash, in actuality. And that divinity is connected to something that's limitless. That's something that's not bound by the rules and regulations of this world. And when we tap into that and we realize that we have the ability to connect to something so deep and go back to all the way to the beginning, to the beginning of time where it was before sin, before we ever made mistake, that's the deepest level of tshuva. So let's try to tap into that level of limitless, of divinity, of chelak el kami mal mamish. So now we're just gonna layer this all on, this like deliciousness. I love to serve this dish with farro, with rice. Top it off with some freshly squeezed lemon and a little fresh cilantro. Have a happy, sweet new year.